Hey, welcome back. Today's video, we're going to be putting on this Shelex head onto this Delta 8 inch joiner. So, let's get at her. So, we're starting by taking off the entire back. There's going to be four screws back here, two on each side. They are fairly large hex. Um, couldn't find my actual hex to fit this, and I was using a security hex, so I don't actually know what size they are. This is going to be pretty heavy taken off, and be careful because your guard on top is spring-loaded, and that's going to fling around and make your screws go flying. As such. Moving on, this is going to be heavy, so make sure you have a good grip. Oh. <laughs> As you can tell, I was not expecting this, and I was just doing a finger pinch hold up at the top there, so... Unfortunately, I had to set it down on top of the outfeed table just to get a better grip and manhandle it over to my bench. And here's what I meant by that guard. That is spring-loaded, so when I took that off, it flung around and knocked all my screws on the floor. So up next here, we're just taking off the belt. I kind of put the belt over onto that side there just so it's out of the way and that it stays on the motor itself. And then we're just going to move this pulley off here. There are two hex screws holding that thing on, and then I just used a crowbar to slide this thing off. And just be careful, there is a key in there. Mine was stuck on the inside, but yours might pop out. Moving on to the actual guard, these uh, two screws in here are the same hex that we used on the back, so we can pop those off. Then we can move to these nuts here. This is a bolt that will actually go from the bottom all the way up to the top of the head, and that's what holds that head down. So I believe that is an 11 16 is what I used here to pull those off. There will be one in front and there will be one in back as well. Now with both of those loose, we can move to lowering the outfeed and the infeed table here. On the back side, there are two screws. They have nuts on them, but really you need to get a hex and unscrew them. And then there's that middle knob that you can turn. All three of those should be loosened up. Then you can use this main knob in the back to lower this all the way down. Moving to the infeed table, there is one lever on that side, that's your main lever to loosen up. Then there's also one in back where we put the belt on. This is another one that just screws right up against the edge and makes it a little bit harder to move this up and down. So you're going to want to loosen both of them on both sides. So now it should be pretty easy to move up and down, however it's still not going down far enough. So there is another lever here, this is kind of like a safety stop on these models. You're going to want to lift the infeed table as high as it can go, and then that latch will flip up and allow you to lower it down even further. And you'll want to lower it all the way down as far as it can go until basically that large lever hits the table. With both of those lower, this should just lift right out. Now we can take that over to the bench and we'll try to get both of those side pieces, whatever those are, off. So here I just used the same crowbar again. Um, one of these came off really easily. The other one was a stickler, so I had to work on it a little bit more. But I will say the Helix head that I got came with the bearings, so I didn't care too much about nicking this up, but uh, it popped off pretty easy. The bearing got stuck in there, so I tried to use a screwdriver or whatever just to get that thing popped out because we do need that to be removed. I wanted to use the new bearings. So with everything out, I was just kind of spinning this here, making sure that I had the right direction right. You know, the wood's going to feed in that way. So then you can take these two, and one thing I noticed on mine was one is bigger than the other one. So I had the bigger one would be facing you. So it would be on the working side versus the back side. Then I just popped both of those on and pressed them into place. And then this should be able to just set right back in place. Thank you. 
So at this point, everything is set. So you're just kind of reversing what we did in the first half of the video. So I'm going to start by basically securing this back down, getting that head nice and secure, making sure that those bearings are working. And then I like to, after that was nice and tight, just test that this thing still spins. After each step, I basically test to make sure everything is still spinning correctly. Next, we can work on moving this outfeed table back up into a spot. And you can see that bar popped out. That is what those screws push up against to really lock this table into place. So make sure that bar stays in there and get it back into place. And then I just took a square to make sure that my outfeed table was the exact same height as each tip of the helix cutters. So you want to make sure that when you're pushing that wood over there that it perfectly slides up onto your outfeed table. So just using this to make sure everything is good. And then we can go back around on the back side and make sure everything is nice and tight so that it doesn't move at all. And once those screws are tightened, I like to just go back to that knob in the back and make sure that you can't move that one way or the other. Make sure everything is nice and tight. And again, now that everything is tightened, I wanted to make sure nothing moved. So again, just taking my square and making sure that, you know, there isn't a huge gap or that these aren't hitting. Then we can move on to the front. Much easier here. You can just lift everything up. Your safety latch will latch. And then again, this can just tighten down. Now, this should already have your measurements there with the red arrow, but I just wanted to make sure that I was bringing it up to a certain spec height. So I was going for somewhere around a 16th of an inch, maybe a little less. And then once everything is good, you should be able to tighten down the latch on the front side and on the back side. At this point, we can put the guard back on. There are two pins in there. Um, they came out on the guard side for me, but they should be able to slide back in there. That just helps you line everything back in and then put the two screws back in there and tighten everything up nice and tight. So now we can put our pulley back on. I used a rubber mallet just to really get that on there. Um, and then again, put that belt on and then you want to get both of those hex screws tightened down nice and tight so that doesn't spin. Then we can get the back on. I was struggling here. There are two pins just like the guard had that you need to get perfectly in place. It helps with the alignment. But once that's in there, then you can put the two screws on each side and tighten that down. After everything was completely together, I spent a lot of time here just making sure after taking off the entire back that everything was perfectly square. You want that back to be perfectly 90 degrees to your, your tabletop, more so on the outfeed than the infield, but I wanted to make sure it was everything was good. So here I just did a once over, made sure everything looked good before plugging it in. I was a little nervous. You never know. You didn't, don't want anything flying off, so I took a stance so that nothing would hit me. So here, just checking everything, making sure it's spinning okay. And then just putting my hands on here, just trying to feel the vibration, making sure nothing's, you know, completely out of whack, but everything seemed good. So I just wanted to grab a piece of wood and run a couple test slides through, and man, it went through like butter. Whew. Well... That was probably one of the biggest pain in the asses I've ever dealt with, but whew, she's smooth now. So yeah, I was running some test pieces as you can see. So I'll try to get the angle here. This looked really good. There's a couple little marks here, but that would sand right out, no problem. You can you can kind of feel it, but absolutely no tear out. It looks really flat. So. Very happy. Ooh, that is gonna make it really good. That is way quieter too. Holy cow, you can notice a noise difference. I wish I would have done a decibel tester before and after because that is, that's something else, but awesome. All right, well, hope that helps somebody re replace theirs and figure out what to do. So, all right, see you next time.